morning, morning, morning. I've just finished doing a 17 minute video that I realize is too long and it's on two completely different topics. So if you're watching this and I'm about to slide into the second part of the video and it might look a little bit weird, but hopefully it will make sense in editing. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. I'm Sean Butler, she's Bugsy Malone. We are the Spurs Talk Show. This is episode 75 of Tottenham Walks. I hope you're all happy, healthy and doing the things you love. If you wouldn't mind doing something for me, I would love it. Hit that like, share and subscribe button and the notification bell. Hi right, guys. And let's get the video going. Anyway, anyway, let's move on to some transfer news. So, Football London reported this morning, and so did HITTC, that the Italian media um, once again are linking Tottenham with Juventus players. Last week, we were linked with Bonucci, the 35-year-old centre-back who's not enjoying his time at Juventus so much right now, given Juventus' really poor start to the season and given, I think, um, Gleison Bremer's arrival into the Juventus squad has maybe disrupted his ability to get 100% of the minutes like he usually gets. And there's that relationship between Paratici and Juventus and even Conte and Juventus. And so... Because Juventus players are playing for a team that's not doing very well and they probably have very high expectations, then it's probably easy to make connections that really aren't there around players leaving Italy coming to Tottenham. So I'm not going to put too much weight on this. But last week it was Bonucci. Although, and I put a, I put a video out about it, you can watch it here. Although I was, I was alerted to in the comments beneath that that apparently about two weeks earlier Bonucci had said the Premier League is passing by. He's, he's not fit or fast enough to um, handle that pace of football. So, again, Paul watered over. Water poured over it, sorry. Yesterday, the, the latest name to be linked with Tottenham is Manuel Locatelli, who is a 25-year-old Juventus player. I think he's 25, maybe 24, 26, something like that. And he is ex-Sassulo. Technically, he's still Sassulo player. A midfielder who Arsenal have been after for a long, long time. And, you know, at 35 million quid, which I think is the asking price, I think you, whoever gets him will have a bargain, a great player in there, in Locatelli. He is a phenomenal player. And once again, you know, Tottenham linked with him. And the article is saying that Tottenham are trying to convince Juventus, uh, sorry, trying to convince Antonio Conte of. Um, the, the path and the, and the vision that we have to, to really compete and go after things and you know signing someone like Locatelli for 35 million would go on some level uh, a long way in, in the minds of Conte in, in signing him. Look, Locatelli is a midfielder that can play kind of anywhere in the midfield but he's really defensively minded as far as I can tell. He does. He has scored a few goals. I think in the 185 odd games that he's played in his career, I think he's got about like, I don't know, 12 goals and 16 assists, something like that. So he does have a, an attacking side to him, a creative side to him. But I think his first thought is obviously defensiveness. So on paper, he sounds an awful lot like Benton Core, like Hoiberg, like Oli Skip, and Yves Basuma. <laughs> a kind of all round, everything midfielder that, you know, I'm sure is better than Oli Skip. I don't know whether or not he's, he's better than the ceiling of what Basuma could be. And, you know, take your pick on Hoiberg and, and Benton Core, whether you think that these guys are, you know, the real deal or, or maximizing their potential, whatever. But, Look, he's a great player, but he's he's not filling any gaps. We already have four players that play that can play in that six eight role. And for me, you know, here's the real kind of kicker. We all know that we need a right wing back, a centre back to to finally push Eric Dyer down to, you know, bench level player. And a creative midfielder in the guise of like a Milenkovic Savage or a James Madison. And so there's three players. And if we really want them to be high quality enough that can that can step in and do something, 
Well, look, the right wing back market is pretty pretty thin anyway. So if you want someone really good, it's probably going to cost you, you know, 60 million quid. Centre backs are a bit more plentiful. Um, you know, you could get a De Vry or a Skriniar for like, I don't know, I mean, De Vry is probably very cheap, like 10 million. Skriniar is probably a little bit more expensive, but both of them are out of contract soon. And then a James Madison's going to cost you probably like a 60, 70 million quid because he's, you know, he's English or homegrown. So that's a massive slice of your budget. But on top of that, on top of that, guys, let's not forget that we do need budget left over to replace Longley or Ben Davies because that's just a year loan. And I think we're starting to see, unfortunately, in Dejan Kulosevsky, a little bit of an issue with a recurring injury in a hamstring. We know how, you know, how vulnerable hamstring injuries are to reoccurrence. And it's devastating news to hear that he's already snagged it again and that he maybe won't be back in, or won't be back until after the World Cup. And a lot of people now are talking about the maybe the, the chance he'll need an operation and we won't see him back until January. Plus you've got Kulisevsky, uh, sorry, plus you've got um, Richarlison, who's also suddenly got an injury. We don't know what that gonna, that's going to be like. We know Lucas Moore is not fit enough yet. So, you know, I, I hear a lot of people saying, like, look at the bench, look at the quality and the depth of the bench. It's a disgrace. But at the same time, when you have three players that are forwards that all play in the same position, that are all injured at the same time, or that are not fit at the same time, then I don't know what you can do about that. You have to shake hands with that, as I said yesterday. What I would say is that maybe Tottenham do need to also find enough money in the January window to get somebody in who can, like a Malinowski or whatever, somebody who can play in those roles as well, who's more trustworthy, reliable and prepared for the Premier League than Brian Hill is. i got no problem with Brian Hill, but Conte obviously doesn't fancy him. And so if you're working with six forwards to play in a three forward uh, formation, but one of them the, the boss doesn't want and the other three of them are not fit at the same time, then there's an issue there. And if, God forbid, uh, Sonny or Kane gets injured, then what? Right? Then what do we do? And so for me, the whole rant, the whole purpose of this rant is to come back round to the idea that if Conte does sit down and sign a new contract, and I really hope he does, he will want assurances and guarantees around making money available. And if there's any truth to the idea that 200 million quid was the budget that was allocated, and that would be for January or for the summer, in our, for argument's sake, then I don't think you can spend 35 of it on a Locatelli, even if he is the real deal, even if it does mean um, stopping Arsenal getting hold of their guy. Because I feel like he doesn't fill a gap. He might improve a hole that's already filled, but he doesn't fill a gap. And we've got plenty of gaps that need far more attention. So once again, I'm going to pour cold water on the Locatelli transfer deal. I think it's just journalists putting two and two together and thinking Paratici, Conte, Juve, Juve's problems, Tottenham's uh, problems. Let's find a story where a story doesn't exist. I'm okay with Benucci coming in, by the way. If it means that we can get someone in to compete with Eric Dyer, I'm okay with it as a short-term stopgap if we can't get hold of Screening R or De Vrij. As far as the right wing forward um, solution, I like that guy Malinowski. He looked like he had massive desire to come to Tottenham. He looks like a good player that's, that can fill a gap for relatively small amounts of money. And I'd love to see a Madison come in, or obviously a Milenkovic Savage. Right wing back for me is a really tough one because everyone points to Hakimi as the best right wing back in that could potentially be uh, acquired. But there's no real reason why he would want to come to Tottenham. And if you don't get him, like the drop down is pretty significant. I don't know how many top, top level right wing backs are available, especially in January. And that is something that it's a big gap, a big problem, and it's a big job to fill it. Let me know what your thoughts are, guys. I'm going to let you go because we'll be talking for 16 and a half minutes once again. I will see you tomorrow for some level of content for the Tottenham Newcastle game. My prediction, by the way, is 1-0. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are. I love you. I love you a lot. I'll see you next time. And as always, as always...
拜拜。